were on our way to Tapalpa and we had heard it's a mountain town, but man, I was not expecting this super curvy, skinny road going through the mountains. This is nuts. I'm terrified that some person is going to be passing coming around one of these corners. Yeah, it is a little sketchy for like Mexico because people do that even if it's a solid yellow line. These windy roads remind me of all the camping trips that we used to go on for Girl Scouts and my mom would always be driving us in our minivan. She absolutely loved going through the mountains and twisting and turning and going around the corners too fast. And as long as my car doesn't get totaled from a pothole, we are good to go. <laughs> To Papa, the highly recommended city. It's been recommended to us so many times. Honestly, I've been dying to go to Tapalpa, a Pueblo Magico, since about the time that we got to Guadalajara because so many people were telling us to go here. So far, we went to a restaurant, and what happened when we were in this restaurant? Well, the last city we were in was Playa del Carmen. We came here, and we both ordered an entree, both ordered a margarita, both ordered cafe de olla and then shared a dessert for about the price of one entree in, in Playa, Playa del Carmen. Carmen. Okay, so this is Rompope. The first time I tried this was in the Guadalajara airport, adding it to my coffee because I wanted like some sweet flavoring to it. And people thought that was weird. I didn't know it was like Mexican eggnog at the time. This is also Rompope, and it definitely tastes like alcoholic eggnog. That stuff at the airport did not. It just tasted like prawn syrup. <laughs> this, on the other hand, the pan de lote. What's pan de lote for those that don't speak Spanish? Corn bread, but it's not like corn bread that you probably know of. This is like bread of the angels, <laughs> made of like unicorn magic and ah. Oh. <laughs> so you might say that we got a little carried away. <laughs> But being in a city that is so reasonably priced and gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous, these whitewashed buildings and wooden detailing, come up with a better description for you. Okay. Very first impressions of Tapalpa. Go. Um, I absolutely love it here. It has this nice calm energy. I really do like the white building type deal and it's kind of like mountainous. It reminds me of another favorite Pueblo Mexico of ours, Mazamitla. How about you? Right away, it seems like a very popular tourist town for Mexicans, but it seems yes. like they don't see gringos here very often because we are getting a lot of looks. <laughs> <laughs> we are dying to explore Tapalpa more, but today has been a pretty hectic and long day. This was the... What are you doing? Nothing. This was the pack up the whole house, pack up the car, and move it on out. So we will see you in the morning in Tapalpa. <laughs> already started off great when we woke up at the hotel slash Airbnb we're staying at. They had sweet bread for Jordan and coffee for me and that's awesome because it was very very cold <laughs> this morning. And we got a little bit of breakfast. It was ridiculously affordable at 107 pesos. Yep, and that included two breakfasts, coffee for both of us. Now we are off exploring to Pulpa. We just went into this one little store which Wow, there were so many cool things in there. One of the big reasons why Tapalpa is considered a Pueblo Mágico is because of these hand-carved, handmade wooden items like little trinkets and keychains, pens that are made out of wood branches, and these magnificent carved tables and chairs. Those tables and chairs were awesome. For a little over 400 US dollars, you can get hand-carved, amazing designs, table, six chairs. There's a bunch of stray but really nice dogs around. We of course had to go to a little tienda, tiendita, and get some pe uh, comida para perros, and we already found found a taker. Well, one found us. One found us, yes. You smell this from a mile away, huh? 
What else did you get at the little tienda? Oh, at this other store with Artesinias, I found this wooden ring, handmade wooden ring. And Ahihik, one of these, was selling at the Tuesday market for 80 pesos. This was 12 pesos, so as you can see, I could not pass that up. <laughs> <laughs> We're finding this town to be very affordable. Less than some of the least expensive cities we've been to. Did you find another taker? I found another one. <laughs> We're sitting on this second story balcony of a restaurant, just kind of relaxing and enjoying the awesome view of Centro, which I can't stop taking video and pictures of because it's so picturesque and so pretty. So far, I'm seriously thinking, why haven't we visited this place sooner? I love every little feature about it, from the buildings to the people to the friendly street dogs, the prices everything. I don't have a single complaint. What do you think, Jordan? There's tons of cool little shops walking down the streets. Lots of locally made artesanias and Especially craft. Especially made out of wood. Yeah, lots of wood stuff, which I'm a huge fan of. I'm really excited to see the nature around here. There's yes. these giant rocks, which doesn't sound too exciting. But, but aliens put them there, so that makes it a little bit more interesting. <laughs> And there, okay, maybe not. <laughs> there's a gigantic waterfall nearby. <laughs> These are unprecedented times. You will never believe what is about to happen. Laska, where are we? <gasps> Laska is at El Centro of El Centro. Laska, how does it feel? Oh, there's lots of smells here. Can you tell us about it? Okay, well, then bye bye Approximately Valley of Big Stones. Big Stones. Very big <laughs> stones. It's about 15 to 20 minutes away from Tapalpa. Considered the main attraction of Tapalpa. Back in Phoenix, we did this hike all the time. It was our favorite hike there. It was the mountain was Tom's Thumb. In Scottsdale. Yeah. You got to the top and it had all these giant rocks. And so far, this reminds me a lot of the top of that mountain. With less desert, more lush mountains and meadows. <laughs> So to get in here, it's free or whatever you want to donate. I mean, the views here are pretty spectacular, looking down at all the trees and the forest, and these sure are gigantic stones. <laughs> I'm shocked by how many people are here right now. <laughs> Some people in reviews on TripAdvisor had said it's probably not worth a drive to Guadalajara to come see this, this only, but I do think it's worth a visit if you're into Papa. So Jordan, do you think this is a, a mossy? <laughs> you are so ridiculous. So what are your final thoughts on Valley of Large Stones? Maybe it's because I'm jaded because I'm no stranger to big rocks in Arizona. <laughs> but to be honest, I think this is just a bunch of big rocks. Granted, with a spectacular view. Yeah, yeah, the view is cool. Tapalpa has so much to offer. It's an amazing little town. For this to be considered the main attraction is pretty disappointing. This is great. I'm glad we came. But I think the culture and the food and the people of Tapalpa are a lot more impressive as a main attraction than this is. And if you want to make this a little bit more of an adventure besides climbing all over these rocks and under and over and looking at the views, they do have zip lining. I think it's a little bit overpriced, but it's 150 pesos per person. You can also rent horses or possibly donkeys, and I don't know how much that costs. And also they sell like micheladas and tequila and snacks and corn and I mean elote. <laughs> I bet I know what he's going to dress up for Halloween. A burrito. <laughs> Please don't tell me to drop. <laughs> <laughs> he likes you. 
out of Tapalpa about a half hour away there's this really awesome huge waterfall that we're going to try to get to we hear it's a bit of a, well it's a bumpy road to get there <laughs> but we hear it's a bit of a hike once we do get there move now we're on a pretty much all dirt road my car seems to be doing okay with it so I wouldn't even say that this is something that you need four-wheel drive to get to although it would probably help we were told that once we get on a sketchy one-lane road that means we're going the right way. <laughs> this is a nice road. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is where you would need four-wheel drive. <laughs> right, so we're pretty much right at the start of the trail. We parked our car at the end of this sketchy, bumpy road. Which, I told you, my car was doing okay. Don't need four-wheel drive. Uh, uh, it was pretty questionable. I think you probably would want to four-wheel drive vehicle or an ATV or something like that. And but I think getting out of here will be tough because there were some <laughs> steep roads that we came down. Yeah, so we'll see if we can make that out. But I am really excited to see the waterfalls. We were told this is approximately like a one to two hour hike to get there uh, to Salto de Nogal, uh, which is approximately 40 minutes drive, in my car at least, from Tapalpa. Let's do it. This is going to be a pretty long day, so we're trying to hurry through this trail and get to the waterfall. And although we just started on the hike, we can already hear a waterfall roaring in the distance. So this thing must be big. Yeah. <laughs> and so far, I honestly think this might be one of the most beautiful hikes ever. There's so much nature, butterflies flying around, wildflowers, gigantic grasshoppers, birds chirping. I mean, if you want a big dose of nature, this is where you need to go. <laughs> opened up a little bit and we see this cliff. Holy crap, beautiful. The hikes I'm used to, you go up first and then back down, but here you go down. Like it's like you hike all the way down into the canyon and maybe get to the bottom of the waterfall there and then the hike back is coming up out of the canyon. I highly recommend wearing some great shoes. Ah! We've been able to hear it the whole time. <laughs> I was saying, it's kind of a tease that you can hear the waterfall but not see it, but also sort of motivational. And we're almost there! Ah! We were told there's two waterfalls, and the first one we see is going to be the smaller of the two. So, this one must be that one. This one must be that one. <laughs> that one must be this one. It doesn't sound small though, but let's see it! Ah! Oh! 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 Oh my gosh! I'm scared of heights, so I'm standing by the edge of this, just shaking. This is the smaller of the two, and this is by far the biggest waterfall I've ever seen. I was just gonna say, I've seen little, little <laughs> versions of waterfalls before. But this is my very first ever actual waterfall, and this is so cool! A friend told us this was going to be a two hour hike to get down here, but we weren't timing it. If I had to guess, it only took us about 20 minutes. Maybe 30 minutes. We were going as fast as we could. I'm still convinced that there's going to be another bigger waterfall. We met some people down here and they said this was the biggest, but I have that adventurous spirit and I kind of want to go see. <laughs> this being my first waterfall ever, I was not expecting to feel so like moved by it. it there's just so much power with the water coming over the edge jordan freaking out and grabbing my arms because i wanted to go in the middle of it well, just a lot of <laughs> a lot of emotions we were starting to lose hope because we didn't 
hear anything as big as the roar as the last waterfall, but... My heart's pounding so fast right now. We just walked around the corner and saw this. This is massive. massive. Oh gigantic, my gosh. Oh, Holy okay. Crap. Check this out. Oh my gosh. This is amazing! This is like the stuff out of movies. Wow. And guys, there were two other people down here. We asked them, hey, there's another bigger waterfall, right? They said no, and they went back to their car. Just go up the creek a little ways, it's not far at all, and you'll find this gem. So what do you think about those big rocks being the main attraction of Tepapa? Who did that? <laughs> Who did that? Show yourself! <laughs> this, this is what you need to go see if you're in Tepapa. Yes, the road is sketchy to get here and you probably should rent an ATV and not take your Prius C. The hike is so worth it. I am, I am at a loss for words. This is, this stuff out of like National Geographic. I never thought I would see something like this in my life in person. This is incredible. <laughs> Seriously, this is stuff straight out of National Geographic, straight National from Geographic. National Geographic, <laughs> straight from the Travel Channel. Oh my gosh, can we absolutely live, breathtaking. Can we live back here? <laughs> oh, I can't even imagine what it would be like to camp here and just hear the sounds of this waterfall. Oh, <laughs> oh this is so great. Wow. Oh, the mist. Oh, just keep it coming. Oh, oh just look at this. Wanna right. jump in? <laughs> this might be cooler water than the cenotes. <laughs> I can't even get over this. I wanna stay here forever. We saw some rain clouds and since we had some sketchy roads on the way in and we have to go up some steep hills on the drive out, we're booking it to the car right now. <laughs> but man, this was so amazing. Guys, I know a lot of you who live in the Lake Chapal area or Guadalajara, if you live in one of those places, you're not that far away from here. This is an absolutely must see. Okay, so <clears throat> one word of caution. The hike back out of here, since of course the hike down there is all the way down, 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 down the whole way. It's intermediate to hard. We're in shape, we do Insanity every week, but we're having to stop quite often, and I do think the altitude plays a huge role in this. Uh -huh. Yeah, we're stopping about every 50 meters to take maybe a five or 10 second break. Oh man, I totally underestimated this difficulty. <sighs> Day into Papa, what do you think of it now? I love this place. Thoroughly, truly love to Papa. I might be a little bit biased into liking this provincial mountain town cabin y feel of a town because when I was growing up, our family had a cabin in Flagstaff, and some of my most cherished memories are from our cabin. So, all in all, I love it here. It's quiet. It does seem like a place that tapatillos like to come and party, like a nice vacation spot, but it doesn't really have that party vibe, like craziness, somehow, that weird duality. What do you think, Jordan? Pretty much agree on every point you said. I really love it here. If I lived here, though, I think I would get bored, so I think this would be a 
a great place that I would love to have a cabin for a nice getaway. But yes, would definitely love to come back here and for sure want to go to that waterfall again. That oh was my gosh, absolutely yes. incredible. You must, must do that if at all possible. 100%. Also guys, if you're looking for somewhere to stay in Tapalpa, we really enjoyed this cabin style Airbnb hotel that we found on Airbnb. It was super cool right in town. We'll link to this place down in the description if you want to stay here as well. Also, if you're new to Airbnb, please use our link to sign up. You get a nice $40 credit and that also gives us a credit which helps us continue traveling to new places like Tapalpa. Thank you guys so much for watching this video today. If you liked it as much as we did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe <laughs> to our channel. So you can see more videos that we're putting out about our travels in the world, specifically Mexico right now. And one more thing. Go on that bell, <laughs> so you get notified the next time we put out a new video. And we'll see you there.